my name is Nicole McCoy, and I am one of the pediatric anesthesiologists here at Sean Jenkins Children's Hospital. That's a good question, and I get asked that often by uh, patients and families pretty much on a daily basis. So to kind of explain it to you, like I explained to a nine-year-old who asked me last week, anesthesia is basically our way of keeping you safe and comfortable during your surgical procedure. When I explain it to a parent, I talk about uh, different things like pain management, uh, even some amnesia. Some of our medications cause a good purposeful amnesia. So there are many aspects of anesthesia. It's not just going to sleep and waking up. There's making sure that we have provided um, adequate pain control during the procedure. And that it is true that they, we want the patients at an, a sleep level that is satisfactory for surgery, but also allows them not to have any memory of the surgery. So again, when children ask me, you know, what exactly is anesthesia, that's a fun question to answer. And I always come at it from, well, our, my primary goal is keeping you safe and comfortable uh, while you're having this surgical procedure. So I actually completed a general pediatrics residency, so I'm actually triple board certified. So I keep my general peds boards active, and then I'm also board certified in adult and pediatric anesthesia. You may encounter anesthesia at various points in your journey uh, when you're coming to have surgery. So we will often have a nurse reach out and do a preoperative phone call with you to review any medical history problems that would be uh, important for us to know before you arrive on your day of surgery. In addition to that, on your day of surgery, you'll meet uh, the anesthesia team taking care of you prior to coming back to the operating room. So that would be in our holding area or pre-op area. There will be often a whole team of of people taking care of you. So as we are a teaching hospital, you may have resident physicians taking care of you. Um, you may have medical students on their rotation with you as uh, just observing in, the, in your child's journey. And then you'll meet our nurse anesthetists who may be taking care of you. And then ultimately the supervising anesthesiologist who will go over the plan for your child's care uh, for that day. Most people and most children have a uh, a significant amount of anxiety about going under anesthesia. You know, as a parent, a parent myself, I would be very worried about handing my child off to someone I've never met before and trusting them completely. So it's an interesting dynamic that we have when we first meet our patients and their families. We have to establish rapport very quickly to make sure that you trust me when I take your child back. Some nice things about uh, our peri-op area, we have individualized patient pre-op rooms. So when you come back from the waiting area while you're getting prepped for your surgery, you're in a, a single room, it's quiet, the door can be closed, the lights can be turned down, especially if you have a young child or a very anxious child, those are important things. In addition to our private um, pre-op rooms, we have private uh, PACU recovery bays, which is also nice uh, when children are waking up from anesthesia. Other very um, important um, specialized individuals that you'll meet in the pre-op area are child life specialists. So their main goal is to help make your uh, you know, experience here um, as um, low anxiety as possible. So this often involves crafts and games, iPads, and we even have uh, virtual reality goggles that patients can wear while they're getting an IV placed or while we're talking about, you know, what's gonna happen during the day. So those are all, you know, non-medication modalities for patients to uh, experience to reduce their anxiety. In addition to that, we are all very experienced providers uh, that can administer medications to reduce anxiety prior to going back to the operating room. And we have various ways to do that. Patients can take medicine by mouth. We can also do a, a nasal medication similar to a, you know, an allergy medication that you would put in the nose. And if we encounter a patient that is um, combative or um, potentially someone who is not tolerating oral medications, we can always give an, uh, an injection in the arm similar to a, a vaccination that provides medication to calm a patient down so we're safely able to bring them back to the operating room. So we have some non-medication modalities and then we have some medication modalities. And in addition, you're luckily at a children's hospital that specializes in making a child's day um, the least um, anxiety provoking as possible. You know, it's always nice to know a little bit about a patient before they come in. So the more that you can, more information you can provide uh, your surgeon's office about fears you may have about your child's um, experience prior to going back to surgery, 
for example, things they do well with, things that they don't do well with, if they take medicine well, if they don't take medicine well. That gives us a little time to prepare a really, um, a really good anesthesia plan and we're often available to reach out back to the parent and discuss you know what might be the best option so for some patients who are on the spectrum they may do well with a low lit room uh, we can bring them back to the operating room where we can turn the lights down and sometimes we'll even have uh, their favorite show on our monitor in our operating room while they're going off to sleep or we often will ask if they have a favorite type of music or song or something they want to listen to, something that's familiar to them so that when they're going to sleep, it's not a scary experience. A communication ahead of time is always very helpful for us to formulate a great plan um, that will help uh, lessen your anxiety and your child's anxiety. Um, and all of the other things we talked about, the distractions with child life and preparation uh, in the pre-op area can all help reduce anxiety for going off to sleep. I think, um, especially here at MUSC, we have um, such an incredible group of surgeons and a unique and diverse group of pediatric anesthesiologists who trained all over the country. So we have a lot of perspectives on, um, on different ways to do anesthesia that are all safe. And we have excellent communication with our surgical colleagues. So it's always a constant dialogue between the anesthesia team and the surgery team beforehand, actually throughout the entire you know, perioperative journey beforehand, um, when patients are getting ready for surgery, especially in the operating room, and then um, when patients are recovering, we always have a clear line of communication, and the team that we have here at MUSC is uh, so fun to work with, and there's such good high-quality care that we're providing here um, as a collaborative group. I think um, having first and foremost board certified pediatric anesthesiologists um, is huge. We you know, undergo extra training and have a board certification specifically in pediatric anesthesia. So having um, someone who is extremely knowledgeable and capable taking care of your child should be one way to you know, provide confidence to parents and then also reduce anxiety about when they hand over their precious cargo that we are well trained and can take care of your child. In addition to that, we also have pediatric cardiac anesthesiologists. So that's beyond our training as the general, sub, as the general pediatric anesthesiologist. And they primarily take care of any of our um, cardiac children having heart surgery or non-cardiac um, general surgery. So knowing that we even have more highly subspecialized anesthesiologists should be another important factor. And then all the things we talked about um, in terms of our the design of our hospital with our pre-op area being very um, spacious and fun are the, the flow of uh, how you get from the operating room to PACU, um, where it's also individualized bays. Like, it's just a very unique experience for patients. We also have um, the ability, when it's appropriate, is deemed appropriate by the anesthesiologist taking care of the patient that we can bring parents back to the operating room with us to go off to sleep um, as their child's going off to sleep. So at our campus in North Charleston, Summit Medical Pavilion, we have specialized rooms where we actually go off to sleep in those rooms that are not operating rooms. Uh, they're specifically designed to go to sleep in and parents are allowed to come back with us and that part is nice because they don't have to dress out into scrubs to come back and we can bring more than one parent back typically. Again, this is all up to the attending uh, anesthesiologist's discretion, but um, we do provide that uh, for appropriate patients to have the parents with them for going off to sleep. Here at, at the main hospital, we can bring parents back into the OR again if it's appropriate, and this does calm a lot of patient anxiety, so much so that we may not even have to use medications or other distraction techniques if parents are calm and, and, um, and are, are doing a good job consoling their child. So, in addition to all of our child life specialists um, and great resources in our holding area, our board certified anesthesiologists, having unique things like bringing parents back to the operating room can make um, it a really satisfying experience for parents. I have actually had anesthesia myself um, three times since I've been on staff here. Uh, I had a foot injury and uh, I was able to experience the care that we can provide and, and I actually underwent regional anesthesia so it was very successful and I have a very new perspective on patients having the same procedure, uh, how to um, you know, give them good anticipatory guidance on what to expect. But yes, I've been, I've been blessed to have anesthesia a few times here. <laughs>